Welcome to an intro to spring mass systems. So first we wanna just look at the basic spring mass system. So let's just consider a, an, a spring uh, hanging from the ceiling or from an object. So hanging by one end. Um, then consider what would happen if we hung a mass from the end of the spring. So the mass would pull this uh, spring down slightly and then it would just hang it at a slightly longer length. Oops, sorry about that. So the mass would stretch the string uh, spring slightly. Um, so it hung at a longer length. And then we could either pull the object down or push the pull the mass down or push the mass up to move it out of this sort of position. So we have um, just the spring on its own. hanging. Um, this is going to be its natural length. And then if we add the object, the spring will hang at a slightly longer length. And so this is the natural length. Um, we consider the position with the uh, mass added on um, at equilibrium, the spring doesn't pull, the mass doesn't fall, the spring and mass stay at the same length. So at equilibrium, the spring mass system uh, holds steady. It doesn't uh, it doesn't move up and down at all. Um, and so we are going to call this distance here the sort of change in length with a lowercase. Oh, oops, I apologize, that didn't escape. But we'll call it sort of how much the mass just naturally pulls, stretches the string. The change in how the lower piece um, That's just sort of the natural stretch of the string to equilibrium. Uh, and then, of course, we can move the object uh, or move the mass up and down. So if we start off at, uh, if y equals the displacement from equilibrium, Uh, 
um, then uh, we will say that positive displacement is movement upwards, negative displacement is movement downwards. So we're going to make going up be the positive direction. So essentially in our spring mass system, if this here is equilibrium, so at this place, y would just equal zero, then that system is at equilibrium. If we uh, compress the spring, then our distance y Uh, we have y is positive. And if we stretch the string spring, and measure that displacement, uh, here, um, y will be negative. So again, we're taking our uh, positive direction to be up. So this is our spring mass system. Um, so now let's go about building the differential equation. So the spring mass system uh, potentially has four forces working on it. So we have the force due to gravity. Which always pulls the mass downward. And this force is just given by negative m times g, where g is the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, then in addition to that, we have our force due to the spring. Uh, and this pulls the mass toward, or the spring system back towards natural length, not equilibrium. Uh, and this is uh, just the uh, spring constant K times uh, the total displacement from the natural length. So this is uh, constant K times the total displacement Um, natural length. Uh, if we stretch the string, we would consider changing all to be positive. And so we have a positive force, it'll pull the spring back upwards. Uh, if we compress the spring, we consider the change in length to be negative. Uh, and therefore, um, that we would have k times that change in length would be negative, we have a downward force. So that's, that is what we want. Um, so here k is this a positive constant. 
k is our spring constant and is greater than zero. Um, then in addition to this, we have a force due to damping, Fd. Uh, we'll just call it a damping force. Um, this is essentially a force due to the medium the spring mass system is, is in, and it basically uh, the system resists motion. So it's due to the medium. The spring mass system is in. And uh, I'm not updating here. I apologize again. And our damping force is essentially resistance uh, to motion. Uh, so it resists motion. And it's uh, directly proportional to the velocity in the opposite direction. Uh, so it's just equal to negative C times y prime. So it's proportional to velocity uh, in the opposite direction. And then our final force acting is an external force, which I'm just going to label F. So F is an external force uh, which could be acted in any way, um, and we don't have a formula for it. Um, I should note for our C with that negative in front, we are assuming that C is a positive constant. So these are our four forces acting. So essentially what we're looking for is then our total force. Should be equal to the force due to gravity plus the force due to the spring plus the force due to damping plus our external force. So force due to gravity is just the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. That doesn't have anything to do with where the spring mass system is with the length of the spring mass system. Uh, the force due to the spring definitely will have to do that, but we don't necessarily know all the information we need yet. Uh, we will work on that in a moment. The force due to damping, um, we have uh, and then we have our external force. So just some things to note. Uh, total force is just mass times acceleration. So y double prime, mass times acceleration. Then we have force due to gravity is negative mg. Our force due to the spring is our spring constant K times the change from the natural length. And then we have our force due to damping is minus C times Y prime. And then we have plus our external force. It's not updating properly. We have m y double prime is equal to negative mg plus k times the change from the natural length minus c times y prime plus f. So something quick to note. Um, uh, 
note that at equilibrium, the only forces acting on the object are um, the force due to gravity and the force due to the spring. And they, if there's at equilibrium, they counteract each other. So at equilibrium, the only forces involved are the force due to gravity and the force due to the spring. And there is absolutely no motion, so the total force is zero. Um, so, and there is no motion, no movement. So total force is zero. This is just at equilibrium. We would have zero is equal to the force due to gravity plus the force due to the spring. So they are equal and opposite. So the force due to the spring is just negative the force due to gravity. So we have K times our change in L, or our, our, dis, our change from natural length, is equal to negative, negative m times g. And so we get k times the change in L is equal to, uh, sorry, I should use lowercase, because this is at equilibrium. So we have k times our lowercase L is equal uh, to negative m times g or positive m times g, I apologize. So we have k times our equilibrium stretch is equal to m times g. And furthermore, the overall change should be equal to the equilibrium change minus y. I apologize for not pausing and restarting. Uh, hopefully, this will work better now. So, uh, our um, overall stretch is equal to the equilibrium stretch minus y. Right? So, um, Since y, if we have our compressed spring, here's y, right? Um, if we have our original length and then our equilibrium length here, our sort of stretch from natural length is just that overall length or equilibrium length minus y. Um, and so what we get then is that our, uh, in general, so in general, our force due to the spring is equal to this k times the overall length is equal to k times the equilibrium stretch. Sorry, k times the overall stretch is equal to k times the equilibrium stretch minus our displacement. Uh, and so this becomes the force due to the spring is k times the equilibrium stretch minus k times y. But we just found that k times the equilibrium stretch was just m times g. Again, at equilibrium, the force act due to the spring is 
equal and opposite to the force due to gravity. So if we take this and plug this back into the original differential equation, or our differential equation, we have uh, the total force m times y double prime is equal to the force due to gravity, negative mg, plus the force due to our spring, mg minus ky, uh, plus our force due to damping, minus c times y prime, plus our external force. So our minus mg plus mg cancel each other out. And we just wind up with uh, my double prime plus cy prime plus ky is equal to our external force. So again here, uh, m is our mass, uh, c is our damping coefficient. And K is our spring constant. So all of these come in handy. Um, we are usually given our mass, we are usually given our damping coefficient if there is one, um, and we are usually given our external force. And just note, to find k, we can use the fact that uh, k times the equilibrium stretch is equal to m times g. So we have our uh, differential equation. Sometimes we are not given our spring constant, but if we're not given that, then we are given the equilibrium stretch uh, or equilibrium length. We can find the stretch uh, and we can therefore find our spring constant and set up our differential equation. Um, I should just write since I was labeling everything. Again, K is our spring constant and F is the external force. So in the next videos, uh, we will look at uh, specifically undamped uh, systems. And then in section 6.2, we will look at our damped systems. Uh, and solve some example problems.